So what is this called? No, but like, is this like a mountain range? Like, is it a valley? There's like a river there. So it's just like a combination of all of these things. There's not like a term for this. No, it's beautiful. We are on our cross country drive to see the number one woman in my life, my mom. So right now, what we left. Um, where we live in North Idaho like two hours ago and now we are where are we again? Lewiston. Lewiston. Look how pretty this is behind me. Oh well that's not pretty. <laughs> Did you see? <laughs> that's not pretty. Look how pretty. Wow. So we are going to be driving for five days. It takes like 31 hours to get to Houston and with the kids we're gonna make a lot of stops so our first stop we're driving from North Idaho to Boise and Moab tomorrow and then Albuquerque and then Dallas so we've got a lot of driving ahead of us but this actually isn't my first time doing a cross-country road trip I'll talk about that in a second but I'm really excited for this mainly you know it's clearly not the best circumstances <laughs> say the least but I'm just you've got to look at everything like an adventure and that is what we're doing and that's what my parents would want me to do oh look how pretty and I look like absolute crap right now but I don't care whoa what is this what what is this is it so pretty Brought a little toy for Hendrix. Let's see if he likes it. Do you want? Do you want a little toy? Yeah. <gasps> oh. Oh. What is that? Does it go meow meow? No, not meow. Don't drop it. Whoa, that's cool. <laughs> so we prepared for our five day road trip by Byron got a whole bunch of different drinks. And one of the drinks he got is this Odyssey mushroom elixir. And he just goes, wow, his energy drink is fire. Yeah, I'm really hyped right now. It has 85 milligrams of caffeine. I mean, that's a lot, but that's it's not, like that, not much. that much for an energy drink, but it has 2,750 milligrams of mushrooms. What does that even do? They're like functional mushrooms. Functional. We're, so we're functioning. Highly functioning. We're highly functioning on this road trip. I brought some ginger lemon olipops. These are so good. They're, I am a soda addict. That is, I love soda. I, mean, I, I think I brought it for you. Oh, well, Byron brought it for me. Okay, he brought it for me, but I love sodas. I personally, I prefer Diet Cokes, but I know Diet Coke is not good for you. These Olipops are way better for you. And I get pretty car sick. I've always had a problem with car. I don't get like motion sickness, but I do get nauseous in the car so hopefully this olipop will help me with the ginger the Byron and I have really well we we've never really taken a road trip like this ever this will be the longest time we've driven with each other will we make time, it through the longest time we've spent together straight I don't know but no that's not true not even like five minute break yeah, I guess that's that's true. Are we gonna make it? Yeah, we're gonna make it. After this, after the last two weeks, I can get through anything. We can get through anything. 
stress is like a whole new meaning now. Like, I know what real stress is after the last two weeks. When I was younger, my parents, we would go on a lot of road trips because we would drive from Maryland, because I lived in Maryland until I was 10. We would drive from Maryland to South Florida because we moved to the Miami area when I was 10. So my mom and I would drive back and forth a lot when we were like in the process of moving. And also we would just do that drive to like see family members and stuff. And it was always really fun. And we would stop in South Carolina, which was right in the middle. And my grandmother on my mom's side was from South Carolina and we would see like her family. And it was always really, really fun. I have such good memories going on road trips with my parents. And one of the most amazing things about my parents, I've always, will always remember and cherish this is they always had the ability and the mindset to turn really bad situations into fun, good situations. Like we went through Hurricane Katrina when I lived in when we lived in New Orleans, and they just made. I mean, Katrina was really freaking awful. I mean, it was just. It it also really sucked, and they just turned it into this long adventure, and they made it so exciting, and they were really like joyful the whole time. But when we evacuated for Katrina, we really didn't know what we were doing. We didn't know how long we were going to be gone. We didn't really have any clue what was going on. This was really before social media. So we event, we left and then we went to Maryland where both of my parents are from. And then we drove from Maryland to Dallas and we stayed in Dallas for a couple months. And then I didn't really like Dallas. Yeah, I was 14. I was probably had a lot of teenage angst. So Dallas was not for me. I did not like it. I didn't have any friends. I ate my, I remember I ate my lunch in the bathroom stall because I didn't know like where to sit in the lunchroom and like nobody would talk to me because I was weird, but that's okay. So I just didn't like Dallas. In hindsight, I probably would have liked it better now, but that at that moment in time, I did not like it. And I remember I got home one day and my mom goes, we are going to Utah and we're going to go skiing and we're going to take you out of school. And my dad had, um, someone offered us a cabin to stay in outside of Park City and they just took me out of school and we went skiing in Park City and it was so fun. And they just really always had the ability to turn a bad situation into a good situation because that's what you got to do. Life is what you make it. Byron, what has 10 toes but it's not your foot? I don't know. My foot. was a day when we were like an hour away from our destination, which is Boise. I turned around, we were going through a really windy like mountain area and I turned around and Hendrix was so pale and his lips were white and I knew that nothing good was about to happen and he threw up everywhere. We had to pull over and we had to give him a full wipey bath Poor guy. So, but we got them all cleaned up and now we are at our final destination on day one. I'm pretty tired <laughs> after today. But I'm just like so happy to chill. I've got my number one lady here. We're hanging out. Can you say hi? Hi. Yeah, hi. And tomorrow we are on our way to Moab. And we are just three days away from seeing my mom. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. On the road again. I can't wait to get back on the road again. Because I 
how that song goes. Yeah. On the road again. Okay. I just can't get wait to get back on that road again. <laughs> it is day two of our cross country road trip. We had a great night in Boise, Idaho. Byron actually used to live in Boise. Before we met, Byron lived there for 10 years. Boise is like a is bigger city, but it's not like that big. But it's a really cool city. And so we made it a point to stop here because we have friends that live here. We stayed at their house last night. And they have a son who is Hendrix's age. And they had such a great time playing together. Hendrix, since Hendrix stays home with me, like to be, and it's winter and we have a two month old baby, he honestly doesn't get that much time like playing with the boys his age. I mean, he played with Leon for like the whole last month, last like six weeks, which has been really nice. But Hendrix and Cash, they had so much fun playing with each other. I'm so happy because there was no arguments. Hendrix didn't hit him or bite him. So way to go, Hendrix. Um, look at this. And they had so much time, fun um, playing this like drawing board together. And it was so cute. So like the couple that we stayed with, Byron lived with them for how long did you live with them? 10 years? Eight years. Eight years. Can you imagine? Have you ever lived with anybody besides like your partner for eight years? That's like amazing. It's a long time. Good friends. They're really good friends. And we stayed at their house. And when you're doing this type of road trip, like we're staying in hotels for the rest of the trip but it was really nice to stay at a house that's like comfortable and homey and we had a home cooked meal and it was just a really really refreshing because we're going to be staying in hotels for the next three nights so that made it this whole trip so much more enjoyable because you know it's kind of like there's a lot of things we're going going through at the moment so shout out Rich and Taylor. Thank you for all of your hospitality for last night. We had so much fun. What happened? Um, <laughs> you know, my lips. Okay, so now my skin isn't as dry as it was yesterday, but like my lips are the desert. So maybe they'll not be the desert by the time we get to Dallas in three days. The speed limit is also 80. I don't think I've ever been anywhere where the speed limit is 80. It's nice. We're going to get through Idaho fast. So now we're driving to Moab, Utah. I don't know anything about Moab, but I think it's really pretty. It's more uh, desert. Well, right? we're going to find out. And there's a lot of, I think they do a lot of mountain biking in Moab. But again, I have no idea. I'm not a mountain biker. Like... I think it's hiking, climbing, mountain biking. Yeah, we're not super outdoorsy people, and I've just, um, I've tried to be, but I've just accepted the fact that I'm not. Uh... <laughs> I don't know, that's, who knows, is that okay? We just stopped at a Maverick gas station. Sometimes gas stations have so many options. It's overwhelming. They had like five different types of iced coffees. And I was too, I was so overwhelmed. I didn't even get any of them. I just got hot water. But I'm trying to be as healthy as possible on this road trip. We actually packed a lot of snacks that were relatively healthy, like, I brought a lot of nuts. I brought a lot of beef jerky for some protein. I bought these bone broth packets. So I'm ha really happy I got hot water, but this water's so hot. The only thing with this bone broth is that if you don't add a little bit of salt, it actually tastes pretty bad. Hold on, hold on. Where's the straw? I had a straw. Straw, What's I think the straw might melt. This hot water is hot. It's hot, y'all. It's hot. 
oops because I didn't want you know we didn't want to waste time like stopping at all like fast food places and you no know, I love a McDonald's milkshake but I just needed more than that more like nutrition than that so I've got my bone broth let's stir it up yummy I definitely need some more coffee we're stirring and I mean, I'm gonna be honest, I did, so I have all the beef jerky and stuff, but I did buy like these chips and these chips. I mean, these are like as healthy as it, you're gonna get for a gas station, but I did get a Rice Krispie Treat. Oh, this is gonna be good. So bad if that spilled on me. It's so hot. It's like lava. <laughs> it's like lava. I don't know what type of magic is on the this brand of potato chips, but they are superior to all potato chips. They're like Doritos. They're like textured Doritos, but non-GMO. No artificial flavors, they're not fried. This texture, the ridges on this side. Actually, my mouth is watering. It is the third morning of our cross-country road trip. Grapes are a really big choking hazard for toddlers. They're actually not supposed to. Grapes are a really big choking hazard for toddlers, so Byron is cutting them up really small. I'm um, like super, there's like one. When it comes to things like I'm worried about, for some reason I'm like really worried about Hendrix choking on a grape, like, but like, they are like a really big choking hazard, so Byron's cutting them up, but we've got a long day of driving ahead of us, and my lips are still chapped. Hmm. Today I'm wearing this fringe printed cardigan from shopgraceandjoy.com, and I'm wearing my favorite green Comfy Boots, also from shopgraceandjoy.com. We are in the middle of nowhere in New Mexico, and even if there was somewhere to stop for lunch, it wouldn't even be worth it when it comes to getting the kids out. So we brought a ton of food that we've been eating, and I'm about we're about to make, well, Byron is about to make me a sandwich. I would make it, but he knows where all of the stuff is. We even bought like paper plates to use. You know, a ham, cheese, and mayonnaise sandwich, like turkey, a ham, wait, <laughs> sandwich with mayonnaise, turkey, cheese, mm, hits the spot. Well, yeah, it does hit the spot because there's nowhere else to eat. One of the things my mom always says is if you were ever at a questionable restaurant, the one thing you can always order to be safe is a BLT sandwich, which is so true. 
Because how can, you can't mess up a BLT sandwich. Not like the, not that these are BLTs, but it's a sandwich. So we are officially halfway, a little bit more than halfway through our cross country road trip. Are you happy to be? <laughs> the road trips are fun though. Stop hitting daddy. Good choice. <laughs> I cannot wait to get to Houston. I can't wait to see my mom. I can't wait to see my dad. I can't wait to see Lily. I can't wait to see Luke. I am so excited to get there. Tomorrow, we're gonna drive to Dallas. Um, tomorrow's gonna be a long day. And then from Dallas, it's only like four hours to Houston. So we will be there on Wednesday afternoon. We drove that 2,000 miles. Throughout our drive, I had been communicating with mom and she sounded so good. She was doing well. She was physically strong with only a little memory issues. But on the last day of our drive, we received devastating news. At the hospital in Idaho, the doctors were 90% sure our mom had central nervous system lymphoma. When they performed the biopsy, the doctors are now certain she has glioblastoma. This was a devastating blow, with just a little research on the internet will show you. Mom asked for us not to share publicly results of the biopsy because she wanted time to rest and digest this news. When we got to Houston, mom was energetic and positive, but the next day she started to experience the same symptoms as when this nightmare began. This time she understood that it was happening and alerted that she, George that she needed to get to the hospital. What the doctors have said about the symptoms, mom is displaying, it's actually a seizure. She was in the hospital for six days and is now out receiving treatment. The situation looks dire and it is, but we have faith that God is good and we are seeing miracles every day. We are so grateful for your prayers. We have a plan that we are implementing that is based on science and gives us so much hope. Thank you for all of your messages. Please continue to pray for our mom. Love you all so much. Thank you from the bottom of my heart to everyone who purchased a Gigi sweatshirt. We do have a few left. If you would like to support Gigi in her fight against stage four glioblastoma, please consider purchasing a sweatshirt in her honor from the link in the description box below.